Hi Joanne, can you share with us what and where to invest in 2018? Sure. Um, for more income-oriented investors who are leaning towards less volatile investments, uh, we would recommend fixed income. Because fixed income has a, low, a more stable returns either on a standalone basis or as part of an overall portfolio allocation. Within fixed income, we see a preference towards short duration bonds which are less susceptible to interest rate movements as well as investment grade credit given that spreads have compressed so much over the past few years and there's very little differentiation between high yield and high grade credit. So overall for 2018, uh, we feel that it will be a year of carry play. As to where to invest, we still see a lot of value in China from a risk return perspective. I know there are some skeptics out there thinking about whether the numbers are accurate or there are some uh, being afraid of you know, where the growth, whether it's sustainable. But actually, we feel that um, China cannot be seen as a whole. In fact, it is a two-speed economy and we would prefer to invest in areas of growth um, or strategic importance as well as uh, government support for, for certain sectors. So for example, this would be areas of tech, or uh, um, environmental protection as well as those involved in the One Belt One Road initiative. Mm. So I would say that given that China is a very large part of Asia and, and we being part of Asia is a very natural term for us to invest in. Well at Western we are fixed income specialists and we are an affiliate of uh, Lake Mason. Uh, at Western we feel that uh, fixed income portfolios are integral part of everybody's uh, portfolio uh, and uh, asset allocation particularly when somebody ages and you move uh, into uh, sort of non-full-time uh, non uh, work or you move into retirement, uh, it's very important to have uh, passive income that is both uh, certain as well as stable. And I think that a uh, fixed income portfolio is something that will provide that uh, kind of uh, income stream. For 2018, I think the market expectation is still for the uh, US Fed to continue to raise their federal funds policy rate. However, we expect that this process will be gradual, which is very in line with the monetary policy normalization process um, that the Fed is currently embarking on. The reason why we don't expect it to be a more aggressive pace is because that inflation still remains relatively low. And in fact, when you look globally, inflation overall um, across the globe, inflationary expectations still remain relatively benign. Now for this reason, we do believe that um, government bond yields in many of the developed markets, particularly in Europe and Japan for example, will remain moderately low. Um, so the hunt for yield will continue to be an investment theme for this year. So where do you invest when you're looking for income? I do believe that Asian fixed income continues to be an attractive place to invest for those investors that are looking for yield. Um, Asian corporate investment grade bonds are currently yielding Hello. in the high threes to four percent and the Asian high yield bonds you can achieve a yield of around six percent or higher and then within the emerging market universe Asian investment a Asian economies still have much stronger fundamentals and have um, a better default trend a lower default trend compared to the rest of the emerging market universe uh, well as a house we believe that Asian uh, equities as a whole uh, present a very good opportunity set for, for investors moving forward. Uh, now, of course, uh, certain investment grade bonds like government bonds are a little bit more pricey. Uh, but that's it. Within equities itself, we are also a little bit more selective. Uh, we are of the view that we are a little bit more positive on Asian equities uh, for the uh, above mentioned reasons. Uh, for example, one, corporate earnings is improving. Two, corporate governance is also improving in Asia. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Asians as a whole, uh, we are going to age uh, pretty much, right? Our, our OH dependency ratio is going to rise uh, over the next 20 to 30 years. So you and I are going to be friends for a really long time. Uh, and being old um, individuals who are retired, passive income strategies in Asia, uh, passive income funds uh, in Asia tends to be the way moving forward. So we think that all these factors, like I've mentioned, uh, will continue to support Asian equities moving forward. 2018 is going to be a good year for global equities. Uh, there's economic momentum and there's earnings trajectory probably continuing from 2017. Um, the economic data coming out from the US is pretty strong and the rest of the world is also looking pretty firm. Uh, we are starting to see inflation coming back a little bit, but it's not a, a big worry for us. 
Uh, the Fed will deliver three rate hikes this year, but we don't think that it's going to derail the economic momentum or even markets. Uh, so we prefer uh, equities versus bonds. Um, if you look at the earnings uh, growth for this year across the region, US, Europe, Japan or Asia, uh, there's no big difference. Uh, they are growing anywhere between 9 and 12 percent. So we think that um, you know, markets will do pretty well. Uh, as for preference, we like uh, US equities, we like um, North Asia, we like Japan. Um, for sectors, we actually prefer energy, financials and technology. If you look at energy and financials, I think we see big cost cutting and consolidation the last few years. And now I think the sectors are pretty ready. Uh, any upturn in the top line is going to uh, show up very strongly in the bottom line. Uh, as for technology, it's a different story. Technology is a secular growth uh, play. Uh, we are positive on Asia in 2018 because we think in 2017 we actually saw the first global synchronized recovery in equity markets. And that's actually supported by a recovery of industrialization. And that's actually playing through in a positive way for Asia. Asia has re-rated in 2018, but we think that, that's, that valuations are still attractive. Uh, valuations are 15 times forward earnings ratios, as well as 1.7 times price to book. Now, this is actually still a discount compared to global markets, which is trading close to 18 times. Um, Asia continues to offer a better growth profile compared to global markets, and we think that will continue to favour Asia today. Uh, we also like certain parts of Asia. For example, in China, we are actually seeing uh, very interesting reforms taking place. As you know, the economy is going through transition, and with transition, we are actually seeing uh, reform accelerate, and we are actually seeing positive change happening in various sectors. So some of the, the structural growth areas that we have identified, such as healthcare, insurance, um, are areas that we think that investors could focus upon. Uh, we think that given the successful conclusion of the 19th Party Congress in China, there, ha there will be greater reforms that will take place and that will help investors to, to, re to, to focus on certain areas which are seeing more sustainable uh, growth taking place. Uh, we also like India, and India is an interesting market in 2018 because, as you know, in 2017 there were some um, growth challenges. For example, we saw demonetization take place in India, and that led to a bit of a, a consolidation of the, the economy. So this year we actually see India recover quite strongly. India probably offers investors one of the fastest growth uh, in 2018, and that's supported by um, um, these factors. Uh, bear in mind that we are also approaching state elections in India in 2018, and 2019 we will have national elections. So government policy in the form of a fiscal policy could actually be expansive, meaning that there could be more supportive liquidity conditions that would help India.